So what the heck is a pineal gland and why should we care? Hi. Let me move my microphone closer. I'm Michelle. <laughs> this is Angel Souls and we're going to get into the third eye. All right. So the pineal gland, you might hear it pronounced pineal gland as well, is actually a physiological thing, a real neuroscience people talk about it. <laughs> It's not made up. Okay, it's a part of you. And it's in your brain. Now, this is thought of as the intuition center. And it does get associated with the third eye. So the third eye, feel it out on your head. I have a, a little indent here. I don't know if something happened to me as a baby. <laughs> Am I gifted? I don't know. But I have, I have a little divot right here. And as soon as I press on this and I bet you can do this too. This looks really dumb, doesn't it? But it's cool. Let, like, we're friends here. It's fine. Press on that. You'll feel a, a sensation go through your whole head and it's not just on your forehead. It goes all the way back, right? So when this part of you gets closed off, it can be... The zombie apocalypse. I don't know how else to tell you. Um, when people's <laughs> pineal glands are all shut down, um, you're, you are easily controllable. Um, you believe what you have been thrown on um, normalizing. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to say about it. Things that are absolutely wrong get normalized. Now, you'll hear things like fluoride calcifies the pineal gland. Uh, chemicals interfere with it. I don't doubt that that's true, um, but there are ways that we can overcome that or have a workaround for it. As we go into this discussion, I will be doing a beginner's level meditation, shorter, so that people can start to practice opening their pineal gland little by little. I'll do another one that is meant to be a sleep meditation. We'll do a black screen on that so the light isn't bothering you, but that will be uh, out there for you to use. But when you're getting ready to open your third eye, you have to understand why you're doing it. We call this intention. <laughs> You've heard me say that a few million times, right? What would be your intention? Now, people do go into this because they just want to feel special. It's going to backfire on you. Oof. Oof, you've gotten to skate by in the past decade and it's not happening anymore. You're, no, it's not going to happen. So if you want to do it because you want to have control over other people or feel like you've got some like spidey senses or something, probably not going to work. If you go into it because you want to be connected to divine information, and I'm an angel medium, so I'll give you a whole little angelic approach. There are lots of approaches out there. Lots of great information out there. Check out Joe Dispenza's work. He goes into all the science around it. Explains a lot better than I could. I'm just talking about the spiritual side of it. Okay. Now, if you say, like I said, you know, you want to be connected to divine wisdom. To live your highest purpose. To be, you know, contributing the most light to the collective while being balanced with your shadow aspect. Cool. Uh, <laughs> then we can work with that. Okay. Now I'm going to start off by telling you maybe what not to do based on my mistakes. Are you ready? Okay. Some of you know this. If you follow me for a long time, I've told these stories before. Sorry, you can fast forward through this part. It's a repeat. But I was at, <laughs> I, I was going through a really hard time. Uh, this All this drama had happened at my job and it was a very confusing time. And there used to be a Chopra Center, like Deepak Chopra, on Broadway in New York City. So I go there. It's like a spiritual center. You can get massages there. It's all about self-care. And that's what I did. I went in and I was not, I'd always been kind of like, like I see dead people. I was that kid, right? And I could see angels. And then I learned that I was a big weirdo from feedback. And so I pretended like I wasn't there, right? Shut it down. Typical story for, I think, a lot of people. So stressed out. I go to this place. I walk in. All the smells. And I'm like, oh, I feel, I feel, so, I feel so relaxed. So I go in. I'm having this massage 
done. And the masseuse asked if she could meditate with me. And I thought, okay, whatever, sure. Uh, and during this whole process, something started to happen. As soon as she put her hands over me and we started breathing, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, just all these like flashes of light started happening. And I saw Ganesha, Ganesh. And Ganesh, the way this vision came to me, it was Ganesha, okay? So I, I have like... I grew up not religious, so I'm not well versed on all of that, but that's how this was presenting. And it started out, this vision started out just exceptionally bright. The the colors were just not what we would perceive in this world. And he kept getting closer and closer and closer. And I remember he had his trunk <laughs> like like up against me. Like, you know, when you go up to somebody and you're trying to be really cute and you push push your forehead into theirs and kind of see them a little bit. That's what he did. And he had this smile on his face. And when he came closer, it flashed like the brightest light just out like this. And I shot, I was lying on the table and I shot right up into the poor lady who was meditating with me right into her stomach. And she was just a a tiny lady and I kind of knocked her back a little bit and I almost fell off the table. Yes, this is how some people experience a pineal gland opening. Do not as I do, okay? <laughs> this is a cautionary tale, I'm telling you. But this masseuse, she was so amazing. Uh, when she kind of recovered herself, she grabbed me and she knew exactly what to do. And she put a hand over my head and a hand over my heart and she immediately grounded me. And then, you know, she was like, do you want to talk about it? And I'm like, no, <laughs> maybe later, I don't know. But that was my first, as I discovered later, pineal gland opening and it happened very quickly I did not ease into it and uh I don't even know how I did it I just you know I was in this relaxed place and something kind of pinged and felt like it was calling me and I answered the call that's the best way I can put it okay the second huge okay so I've had like because you have to kind of decalcify your pineal gland we'll talk about that but You know, um, I had the second one that was pretty big. And this time I was, I think I was doing an angel meditation. I don't remember. Do a lot of meditating now. So, but I remember I was lying in bed and I, once again, saw this big flash and I heard a pop. Sometimes you'll hear a pop. And I hit my head on my head. (laughs) Don't hurt yourself. Okay. Like, yeah, when you go in too much, too fast. You, you fall out of the bed. You're going to bonk your head, okay? So just be careful. That's why I'm going to have that beginner <laughs> meditation. So maybe you can ease into it a little bit. So some people have a gentler kind of experience where you see colors. You see swirls of light. You might see orbs. Again, the big flash. I've heard lots of people do that. Um, but more than anything, just kind of let it through sound frequency, meditation, breath work, allow it to sort of clean up, decalcify, and open little by little, okay? Do that, all right? Now, when we're talking about it getting calcified, again, I don't check with a neuroscientist about how that looks or what have you. All I know is that I know what it feels like, and it feels like I'm disconnected, I am too hung up on day-to-day stressors. Um, You know, the thought of meditating sounds irritating. You know, like I can't sit still long enough for something like that. And just feeling in general, like I said, out of touch kind of with the divine. And I know that that's time to go on in there and give this some time and attention. Now, you've probably heard this uh, be referred to as your indigo aspect, your intuition, all that good stuff. But I'm going to give you some archangels that you can work with. So the first archangel that I always associate with the third eye is Archangel Metatron. So Metatron is all about intuition, sacred geometry, the Akashic records. He's known as the sacred scribe. He helps you activate and maintain your Merkaba, okay? The carrier of your soul. Lots of things 
and he helps with studying if you're a student and you need to study and time management amongst so many other things. But he would be first and foremost who I would call in to help me open my pineal gland. Now, Metatron is a huge presence. Lovely, but huge. And sometimes people feel like, I was just talking to some people about this, where it feels like when he comes in, it's almost like like you're being, like a wall is pushing into you. It's like peaceful and loving, but <laughs> like I said, such a big presence. So if that is a little overwhelming for you, you can work with Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, it doesn't matter, okay? They will come in and help you. But I do like working with Metatron for this. When you are doing your breath work, let's, let's talk about that. There are many, many, many techniques. You can look into all the breathing uh, ways to open the pineal gland. See what works best for you. Um, when you're starting out, I think just a simple uh, even in, even out breath. So if it's in for five, six, seven, whatever, out for that same count. You could also do box breathing. In for five, hold for five, out for five, hold for five. Um, I'm not a huge fan of box breathing. It distracts me too much. Like I'm counting. Like <laughs> that's just me. But just keeping the even inflow and outflow. One of the ways that I like to do this, you can also do the theta brainwave uh, breathing in for five, hold for 10, out for 10, you know what I mean? Or in for 10, hold for 20, out for 20. It's up to you. But if you are going to do the even in and out breath, so I like to go in through the nose and you're gonna feel this sort of bubble of energy around here and it just kind of goes up like this, okay? When you exhale, You can even do a sigh. I think the sigh is helpful. So in, ah, you could do something along those lines. The reason why that sigh can, you don't have to do that every time, especially if you're meditating, somebody else is like in the next room. It gets you pushing that breath past the soft palate in the back of your throat. Okay. So it can almost feel like it's coming out of your nostrils a little bit too. So think of it as like a like a dragon <laughs> breathing smoke, you know, kind of thing to get all of that expelled. Okay. So when you're doing that, you can, um, like I said, I'm going to have a whole meditation thing on this, but you bring your attention to the third eye and you breathe into that space. You can imagine a light there. Sound frequencies help with this too. Good music, all of that. Okay. All of that is very, very helpful. This little baby in there wants to be open, okay? So, <laughs> so the second you even just stop, if you're having a rough day, you know, you stop and you breathe in and just do it for like a minute. You'll be evened out, <laughs> okay? But keep in mind that when you're opening the pineal gland, you're naturally going to affect different chakra areas. So your throat chakra, your crown, your crown especially is going to start opening up, Okay. Because the way I, you know, besides the breathing, I like to do this with divine help. So bringing that divine energy through you. Yes. So that's also going to affect the causal chakra back here, which is overseen by Archangel Christiel. And helping with manifestation, kind of getting, um, I don't know, kind of tuning back in and taking a check in about who you are as a human. What do you need to be manifesting? Is that the right thing for you? So on and so forth. So if you start to go through this, and not only does this intuitive center feel like it's opening, but now you feel like you want to tell people off, but from a place of wisdom, because now you know exactly who you are. <laughs> it can happen. I don't know. Something like that. But you will be affecting a lot of other things. Now, during this time, if you see a pop or if you don't see any of that and don't experience it, it doesn't mean you did it wrong. If you see the pop, it doesn't mean you did it wrong. If you almost fall off your bed or you hit your head, you probably, you probably did it wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Don't, don't hurt yourselves, okay, is what I'm saying. So going into this, let this just be a natural unfolding process. Do not try to force an experience and especially don't come out with any sort of judgment do you know what I mean like oh I didn't do it right it's cool okay 
Now, for those of you out there, and I've had people say this to me when I do readings for them, tell me how to open my third eye and don't just tell me about breath work and meditation. Well, there is this magical being that comes in and smacks you with a wand and then it's open. No, you got to breathe and you got to meditate. No excuses. And if you think that that is not it, this ain't for you. Okay, <laughs> this is a devotional practice, uh, right? So why would you want to open your pineal gland? We talked about intuition, but this can get you in touch with realms outside of this physical existence. It's through my third eye, well, a lot of my energy centers that I'm able to get in touch with and channel uh, not just, you know, my spirit guides, but angels and archangels. Okay, that's where all that information will start coming in. We do want to be careful with the pineal gland opening because of the ego. The ego will try to make it fancier than it is. We'll try to say, I'm special and you're not. It'll say, don't do this. You're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> Maybe listen in that moment. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we want to be careful that we're not coming in with that perspective. This is meant to be relaxing restorative, regenerative, and especially if you work with Archangel Metatron or any of the Archangels, this can be an incredible experience. Now, can you then see angelic realms-ish? Okay, the <laughs> you'll, you'll perceive them in one way or another. But more importantly is like activating the higher chakras. That starts to give you more of a clear uh visit to the planes if you want to see it that way so let me know if you have questions uh something else you want me to cover uh if there's enough people asking the same questions i can make this into an entire series so let me know check out those meditations and we're gonna leave it there i'm sending you all so much love and take care